in terms of college applications, yeah, you want to have, honestly, one of the biggest things that helped me a lot in terms of picking where to go was applying to as many as I could, uh, especially in Texas. Uh, I applied to like all the main ones, all five of the big ones. And I figured because since going to college isn't just like an educational experience, it's also a lot of it is a business transaction. Out of those five, you're bound to find one that suits you in terms of business and at the same time, or in terms of the economics and the money. But it also suits you in terms of educational value because there's not like they the people want to make it seem like there's this huge difference in education between like all these schools it's not as bad it's not as big of a gap as people want you to believe so at the end of the day if you're fine with if you're fine with education then you should focus more on like the economics of going to college because college is expensive yeah no i i i totally agree i think whenever you pick like a place to go or college you don't just apply in state out of state too you know you want to look at all your options you want to make sure to look at housing costs tuition costs maybe they'll give you financial aid but also if you fit in with the culture at the school or not you know like maybe maybe you like california maybe you like going out hanging out in the sun type stuff or you like texas you like staying in texas so you know you just you pick based on that type of stuff you know i think the main thing is you want to look at whether or not you know it's feasible financially of course but also if you enjoy the culture and the and, and the education that you're going to be getting from there. And uh, to run down on things a little bit more technically, uh, after after you pick out like where you really want to like go, uh, choosing based on the business transaction as we were speaking before and about uh, the culture and all that, once you've got that set, it's about how you're going to get in, right? So I know a lot, a lot of you uh, for the senior specifically, early application deadlines have already passed, but the December ones are still on their way, especially if you're in Texas. I know Texas A&M, our university has it until like December, the first week of December, or at least that's when they usually have it till. So um, when I was a senior personally, uh, the first thing that they always tell you to focus on is your SATs and ACTs. Obviously with what's going on, that's not really what they're aiming for this time. So make sure you focus on your essay. That's truly what got me into um, Writing a very good essay is what truly, it shows what you are outside of your application. At least that's what I was told and that's what I focused on and it worked out. And I mean, I don't know, for you guys, how was it? Uh, I mean, not just that too. You Those also wanna, thing. yeah, but you also wanna, you wanna like make sure you have some sort of like extracurricular volunteers. Cause at the end of the day, you know, everyone it's, the fact is, you know, people like to talk, but it's really not that hard getting good grades in high school. You know, everyone's, especially the upper echelon, no, seriously, the upper echelon people that are applying, you know, everyone's gonna have the same grades. So what really makes you stand out is what you do outside of school, you know? Like, let's say yeah. you volunteer or, you know, you go shadow a doctor or something. That's really what, like, let's say I wanna apply for uh, a big engineering school, right? Then I know maybe I want some experience. I wanna go, uh, you know, volunteer or maybe intern. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you can get an intern out of high school, but you know, go volunteer at an engineering firm or something like that. Get some experience, something that sets you apart to show these colleges that you know. Oh yeah, you know, I've actually put some thought into this. I'm not just looking on U.S. Census or U U.S. Labor Statistics and see who who makes the most money. You know, I, I actually put some thought <laughs> into my major of choice. You know. Yeah, and yeah, I agree with you. And uh, this is like a, a different kind of circumstance. Like the extracurriculars always. Uh, like they distinguish an individual compared to just the grades. But if you're one of those people who only has the grades and not much of the extracurriculars, cause I know that's the thing. And some people are usually worried about that. Uh, maybe not for these like top tier schools, but like, generally schools have a certain uh, limit, I guess for your grades that you will probably be able to get in regardless of the extracurriculars. Uh, so it's not like the end of the world. You don't have anything like crazy, like like you were saying, like shadowing someone or like doing something that's different than just these school clubs or like the standard stuff. So like, I guess just don't worry about that. And I guess for my experience uh, specifically, like, like the SAT, ACT, obviously circumstances are different right now, but I would say my main advice was to just try to get that done like by the end of junior year, like that summer, like preferably, so you don't have to worry about that senior year. And then for your essays, definitely make sure to take advantage of your English teachers because like I didn't know like anything about how to write them going in, but like my English teacher really helped me out. He edited my essay for me. 
so like th these teachers like they know more than us and like they're willing to help us we like take the time to uh, just ask them that's a huge thing that i agree with um when uh regarding your essays writing as i was speaking before uh always make sure like i know that as a personally for me showing my showing my essay to my parents and to my adults and to like uh someone having a third perspective um i really got uh, annoyed of it at that first but let me be honest with you it completely helps it really does because they help they can give you uh points on where to emphasize because they know they've been through college they um, have an idea of what they're looking for really look to make sure that uh, all your points are being covered i mean true just um just be yourself yeah no a big a big tip for essay writing and i think this really helped me a lot was whenever you write your essay don't make it like a bullet like bullet point list like i'm great because xyz you know you want to make it more anecdotal you want to tell a story and then tie that into oh no you know back in the day i helped a grandma cross the street that shows that uh, i'm a compassionate person something like that you, know? you don't want to problem. make it a bullet a bullet point list that's a problem don't make it also don't make it generic let's not be yeah. generic on these applications guys we can't Honestly, rely the best way that. like the best way for these essays is like draw like like needs said drawing from a personal experience but like really like draw from an experience that really like had a major impact on your life something that showed a different side of you or something that shows what kind of person you really are that really matters and also in terms of the sat act i know these guys were talking about earlier don't stress about it i know your parents are probably coming and telling you you have to study for this every day or they're gonna drop 800 dollars on like test masters whatever don't Somebody. stress about it it's real like literally i know people that went to test masters again the same grade as people that just studied by themselves and using a workbook or whatever khan like, academy us four yeah, the that's exact a big resource we went, test, we went to test masters and we got pretty much the same scores as each other and it's like they're pretty regular scores but hey, like khan academy khan yeah academy. you really don't need to stress about like the act sat stuff and uh you know uh looking on an overview of things uh right now with um, the whole application process, like I like I said before, deadlines have already passed and some are approaching. Look, the most important thing is that after you apply to a lot of colleges, rejection is not a bad thing. It really isn't because you may not get into your dream college, but obviously there is a reason why they didn't accept you. There might be, a, there, but another great college will accept you. Don't be stressed on the fact that you didn't get into your top choice university. Cause I know that's a big, big fear for a lot of students in high school in their senior and junior year. And that's a big pressure from their parents or someone else or just for themselves. Don't be pressured. Just focus on yourself. Do whatever you can right yeah. now. Just enjoy high school while you really yeah. can. That's I mean, I'm really here's saying. something else too, like to ease, ease the stress. Like it's really, it's really not the end of the road if you don't get into your dream college coming out of high school. You know, you can, you can reapply after maybe a year or two at a, a, even a community college. You know, uh, that's a great option for people who may not be able to afford four years at university or people that you know may may have underperformed in high school. You know, doing better at community college or at a lower tier, you know, university. It may, you know, doing well there, you can definitely transfer into these bigger universities, like your dream college or whatever. I uh, actually do want to emphasize on that point a little bit. Guys, going to a community college, I know it seems uh, your friends might be like, oh my God, he goes to a community college. Like in our case, in, it's Lone Star. They say, oh my God, you're going to go to Lone Star. Look, going to community college, it's not about going, it's not about where you go. It's about what you do in that college, right? You're paying money. You're going there. You're making a name for yourself. You could do something at a community, out of a community college that a university graduate out of four years can do. That universities have their own advantages, but don't just, uh, just uh, don't not include that as an option because it's, it's really your path. It's about what you do. Just focus on it. That's it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Take yeah, it. And also, I was thinking about was like uh, we, we heard about all these like different college seminars, like college readiness stuff. How do we do the application? How do we do this and that? When we actually go to them, like think about it. Like in my perspective, like our parents, they don't really know much about like this process, like what to go through because they didn't like go to school here specifically. Well, at least mine didn't. So these seminars, even if you get like one percent like knowledge, like usefulness out of it, like 
I think it's worth it. Like, cause we're talking about community college. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about it. As long as you get like some small piece of value from those, like you should do it. Cause like the information gap is like pretty huge con- considering like how much we don't know about the process going in, like the high school to college stuff. Like I didn't know a lot of stuff, but these seminars and stuff, they, they came in pretty useful. Yeah, and something else, uh, <clears throat> something else with the application stuff. Whenever you're looking for rec letters, you know, don't be afraid to ask. You know, some of these teachers are very willing to just help you out. You know, because they they all been there. You know, uh, you you genuinely you generally want to look for <clears throat> teachers that you've made like genuine connections with, not someone that you know you're just in and out of their class. So they if they know more about you, then they can genu- they can they can write you hopefully a better rec letter juniors start making those connections right now if you haven't seniors uh i know it's a little bit late to ask for rec letters but make sure you ask them for your rec letters like at least uh like like at least like three months like three months or four months in advance because you got to give them time to write a really well uh thought out letter and honestly that rec letter can take take you places if it's written like just make connections um ask early keep in good terms with all your all your teachers it could be from junior year it could be from sophomore year make sure it's in high school at the very least shut up Rishi. i wanted my middle school teacher to write also my those rec letters. letters ask my mom bro chill <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm just playing <laughs> hey those rec, le- hey, the rec letters they're not only for like the schools either they actually apply to a lot of call i mean not called obviously a lot of scholarships as well a lot of scholarships can be awarded just based on a really good rec letter as well so it can help you out in a lot of different ways and on the topic of not uh, procrastinating if you haven't started your application and it's due in less than a month don't be that person that stays up till 4 a.m doing it because i guarantee your brain at 4 a.m is just it's just gonna fail it's not gonna work no, so but get that thing done <clears throat> that not person that. was Rishi. that person was me <laughs> hey but not just that too but uh supposedly you know whenever it becomes more and more competitive especially if you know you don't have the highest sat score the highest grades they give you some some people say you know this is just some some rumors but they give you more special consideration if you submit it earlier you know there's a better chance of you getting in I, i'm Early not sure it's the worm man so like i mean just guys I'll, all i'm really saying is just just get get them in keep going about it don't worry about it too much don't be like me please I took, I didn't take a lot of people's advice on how to do these applications, but it was all good. I learned and now we're just passing it on to you guys. So, I mean, uh, like juniors and seniors, this one's at you, sophomores and freshmen and uh, some very, very ambitious sixth graders and fifth graders. This is, <laughs> just, just go with it. You know what it is. So, um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Have a nice day.